Sorry about that, guys. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Women Focused webinar. My name is Jess McWilliams with IAMB. I am the Education Senior Director for Education and also a very proud member of our Women's Initiative. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. I have just a few housekeeping items to go over before we get started. So just give me one second here. Um, first off, I think we, now we have about 70 people logged on to the webinar today, and I think a lot of you came from the women's conference back in March. So thank you for returning and keeping this initiative going. It was a great way to kick things off. But as we promised at the conference, that is not the end of our initiative. So just keep in mind that we do have an active Facebook group going, as well as webinars such as this one. And just added this week, we've added a women in insurance page to our website. So obviously you're not gonna remember that entire URL there at the bottom, but just remember that our women in insurance page can be found under education and events. So check that out. We will be posting different things there, including recordings of today's and future webinars. Because this is a webinar format, you're gonna notice that all of your lines are muted and that's simply just to keep us from getting a lot of feedback from different places, but we do wanna hear from you. So if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and drop those into the chat feature and I'll work with Tiffany to get those answered. Just know that if we don't have time to answer all of the questions, your question is not forgotten. We will get to that question and be sure to post something later to everyone so everyone's on the same page. All right, our presenter today is Tiffany Boyd. She is the marketing manager for the Philadelphia and Harrisburg regions for Chubb. And Tiffany, you were at the conference. So some of us, some of the people on the call may remember you. You were in the front left corner, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so welcome back. And I'm going to turn the show over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm going to share my screen, hopefully the correct one. All right, is that up? Yes, you're perfect, go for it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Boyd and I'm so honored to be here with you today to discuss mentorship, networking and development and going beyond why these are really important for talent retention. So before we get started, I just want to give you some of my background. I've been with Chubb for almost eight years. And for those that don't know Chubb, we're the world's largest publicly traded property and casualty insurance company. I started with the company right out of college as a multinational underwriter in our Wilmington, Delaware office. Um, after a six year detour, I found my way back to Chubb as a foreign casualty underwriter based out of Philadelphia and focusing on large national accounts with international exposure. While we have 48 branches around the United States within Chubb, I've spent my entire career in the Philadelphia area. And given the large size of the office, there was opportunities that presented themselves during my career that allowed me to advance and take on underwriting management responsibilities throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. In January of 2021, peak COVID times, I took a leap of faith and left my comfort zone of underwriting and became the marketing manager for Chubb's Philadelphia and Harrisburg branches. My responsibilities include oversight of all Chubb products, as well as distribution management across these two branches, that exceed over $1 billion in total written premium annually. In addition to this responsibility, I'm also the Mid-Atlantic Regional Connector for Chubb's Impact Women's Business Roundtable. Impact is dedicated to the support, development, and advancement of women to realize their career goals while driving Chubb's business objectives and strengthening our ties to clients, agents just as yourself, as well as the insurance industry. All of our activities and programs are built around three pillars, talent, business and brand for all levels of women at various stages in their career. So as we get into the agenda, you'll see a big focus on various points in the career life cycle that we'll be discussing. So let's just take a quick look at what we're gonna to cover today. So as a side note, I almost wore that blue dress uh, today as well. So I would have been matching my picture, um, but we're gonna start off with some statistics and big picture concepts about women and their roles in the insurance industry as well as how mentorship increases talent retention. I would then like to introduce the concept of career wealth and the various aspects of when and how you can gain this wealth or expertise. Combining the next two bullet points, we're gonna talk about going beyond the why of mentorship and networking and provide some examples of the who, what, when, where, and how to build relationship wealth at various stages of your career. And then finally, we're gonna wrap up with a few suggestions, or as I like to say, a call to action for when we all get back to our offices or work environments. So 
let's take a moment to think about if you have ever experienced or observed any of these. Um, first one, an opportunity was gained because the person was in the right place at the right time. A networking event where people hang out with people they already know and leave with no new contacts. Someone loses out to a less qualified but more visible competitor. Or a knowledgeable person is reluctant to give a presentation even within their areas of expertise. I think we have all witnessed or experienced these situations and I know some of us are thinking of ourselves as examples. Self-awareness is key to overcoming some of the obstacles that we might be facing as we advance in our careers or engage with others outside of who we currently know. Here are just a few examples of categories individuals may fall into. The doomsayer, they avoid making relationships because they automatically assume it's gonna go badly. The over-preparer, they overanalyze, under and want to be absolutely prepared before each contact. They can kind of come off a little bit robot -y. Um, stage fright. They fear presentations even within their areas of expertise and they miss opportunities to gain visibility. And then the yielder. They fear, fear being seen as rude, pushy, and intrusive. Researchers have found that women have been less frequent and avid networkers than men. They tend to be reluctant to mix business and pleasure, even though women generally have more close friends than men do. Research indicates that women are less likely to use their wide ranging personal connections for professional advancement. And due to the way that women have been socialized to ask for help, many women are comfortable with lending a helping hand to a business contact, but uncomfortable with receiving the same help. And this impacts our ability to network and grow in our careers. So we've all been experiencing the great resignation over the last couple of years, and there's definitely signs of that all starting to stabilize, which is great. And so when I've been in the process of interviewing new potential hires that are getting ready to graduate college, there are themes popping up with these candidates. Let's think about it. These college students have spent several years of their academic career outside of a classroom, on a computer screen, not being able to be social and make connections. I'm seeing a demand for in-person work experience where learning and development is done in person amongst colleagues versus just meeting virtually. From early on, there is demand for opportunities to connect, meet, and establish a network. So organizations should seize this and create these networking opportunities. Mentorship and networking are essential to keep employees engaged at all levels, and that'll help boost employee retention. Let's take a look at some statistics on this. So the data shows that mentorship programs boost productivity, retention, and promotion. 85% of Fortune 500 companies have formal mentorship programs and 100% of Fortune 50 do. 67% of businesses with mentorship programs report increased productivity. 72% of mentees that are involved in these mentorship programs are retained along with 69% of the mentors. If there's no connection to a mentorship program, only 49% stayed at the company. Mentors are promoted six times more than those who aren't in a program and mentees are promoted five times more. And then 90% of employees with a mentor report being happy at work. So that improves the culture of your organization overall. Now let's look at where we are today. Women in insurance make up 54% of the workforce. That's a really good number. If that was the end of the story, I think we'd all feel, feel pretty good right now. But let's peel back some of the layers. If even when we look at certain roles, we've made good progress, but not all. Another good statistic is in administrative levels. Over 77% of these are occupied by women. But that's where the good news ends. If we look at women in executive roles, that number drops to 33.5%. And unfortunately, it gets worse when we look at board level roles, with only 28.5% being represented by women. And also these statistics don't address the lack of multicultural women in executive or board positions. In executive levels, only one in four C-suite leaders are a woman of color. I'm really proud to announce that earlier this week, Chubb introduced a new resource group called Black Women of Chubb. This group's gonna focus on addressing the unique challenges and barriers faced by Black women in corporate organizations to foster a greater sense of belonging and to support their career development and advancement with Chubb. This group's gonna be working in collaboration with IMPACT, which is our Women's Business Roundtable, as well as Mosaic, that's our Multicultural Business Roundtable. So based on the data from the previous slide, we know that mentorship programs boost productivity, retention, and promotion. And we all know that there's a gap in more senior level roles. So let's jump into the who, what, when, where, 
and how we're gonna go about creating mentorship opportunities for yourselves and your teams by first looking at a concept called career wealth. So when you think of wealth, you might think of power, expertise, leverage, you think of all of that interchangeably. Here are the different types of career wealth that, wealth that I would like to introduce you to. The first is formal positional wealth. This is wealth that comes from your job title. You have influential power just because of the role you have. Next, we have subject matter wealth, wealth that comes from having specialized knowledge and skills. Then there's also information wealth. This is wealth that comes from having unique access to information that others find valuable or necessary. As Thomas Jefferson said, knowledge is power. And many folks use information wealth as their means for respect and advancement. And last, but certainly not least, and I would honestly think say that it's the most important, is relationship wealth. This is wealth that comes from being liked, respected, and having strong interpersonal relationships. The more you progress in your career, the more wealth you're gonna gather, especially in formal and subject matter, as well as information wealth. However, relationship wealth is something that you can and should build at every stage of your career. But why does relationship wealth matter? Once you've built true relationship wealth, it'll motivate people to act on your behalf. It's gonna give you the ability to request something or some action of someone else. It will expand your community and connect you to other relationships. If you have a good relationship with someone, they're gonna be willing to introduce you to others and even to use their reputation to vouch for you or to give you an endorsement. And honestly, when you have strong relationship wealth, it gives you the ability to be given grace when you've made a mistake at work. So how do you go about building relationship wealth? Be genuine, be fair, honest, transparent, and hardworking, and others will begin to trust you. Keep your word so that others know that they can rely on you. Do activities that build trust, such as sharing ideas and information, working on stretch assignments, and volunteering for an employee resource group, and honestly, going above and beyond what's asked of you. Be intentional about carving out time to connect and interact with someone. Be patient as it takes time to build relationship wealth. It's not gonna happen overnight. It, it takes time and energy. And, on, and also be respectful, respectful of each other, regardless of the position or stage in your career. And just remember when building all other types of wealth, you are in complete control. You can build your expertise. You can research additional information. But with re relationship wealth, you need to rely on others for support while also looking beyond yourself to support others around you. So there are many different types of programs and connections you can make both formally and informally at different stages of your career. I was actually just chatting with our surety underwriting team this morning about this very topic. Coaching, mentoring, advocacy, and sponsorship are all ways to develop your relationship wealth. As this picture depicts, these types of relationships become more complex to develop as you climb each of the steps. Coaching happens for most of us on a fairly regular basis in an employee manager relationship or in instances where feedback is provided. It is an old saying, but they say feedback is a gift, so ask for it often. You can't shift approaches if you don't know a correction is needed or amplify a strength to be used more often without feedback. Mentoring incorporates coaching, but is typically outside of that manager-employee relationship. This can happen naturally, or it can be formally assigned. The difference between coaching and mentoring is the ability to create a confidential relationship you know, that career safe place to ask questions and get advice. If your organization has a formal program, apply for it. If it doesn't, look for as many opportunities as you can to make connections in as many places as you can. I've been fortunate enough to have numerous mentors in my career and different mentors were needed during different circumstances. In my current role, right when I started, like I said, I started my marketing manager role, January of 2021, we were all still virtually at home. So in my current role, my manager created a mentoring opportunity for me to connect with another female marketing manager. She'd been doing the role for many years and had experience in the role. And this was a true asset for me as I started down my path and as a marketing manager. Queenie and I developed our own relationship and now I feel so comfortable reaching out to her for various reasons, including those, hey, I should really know this, but I don't questions. Advocacy takes mentorship to the next level where someone is advocating on your behalf based upon your work product. Many mentors take on the additional role of advocate when the situation arises, but 
it will honestly depend on the depth of that mentorship relationship. Having a sponsor is a fantastic way to get your brand out there without you having to be present in the room. But sponsorship programs and relationships are not always readily available or established. Sponsorships are based upon meritocracy and they are earned. They must be nurtured and sustained. It's important to always keep in mind that regardless of whatever stage you are in your career, you too can be a coach, a mentor, an advocate, or a sponsor. I know I've had many people, many sounds like a lot, but I've had a few people reach out to me and say, and have told me that they see me as a mentor, but we've never actually had that formally established mentorship relationship. So let's take a look at relationship wealth at the beginning of your career. When you're starting out in a new role or at a new company, it's important to earn subject matter wealth. Again, that's when you do your job well. This is valuable because it gets you noticed by more senior colleagues. However, remember to carve out time to invest in building your relationship wealth early on in your career. If you build this habit early on, it'll keep going as you advance in your career. And remember, it's always important to balance your time and energy so that, yes, you're gaining your subject matter wealth, but you're also building up your relationship wealth. So how do you go about building relationship wealth in the beginning of the career? Who are you doing this with? Who are you building relationships with? Honestly, it starts off with your manager, your team members, then it'll expand to your peers and those you interact with in the building. You may have joined an employee resource group such as Impact that I talked about earlier, and you become, you build relationship wealth with members of that group. And then there's also professional development programs for women. Also, it's important to set up your social media profiles just like, like LinkedIn, which we were talking about earlier. The what, I talked about it. Be genuine, build trust with these individuals by doing good work, building credibility and interacting with them outside of work. And think of reverse mentoring opportunities that can that lead you to be the trusted advisor, like answering technology or social media questions. I, I was just talking to our Chubb interns yesterday about how they can build their network this summer by sharing their skills. I, for one, am not an Excel expert. I can do an equal sum formula like it's nobody's business, but I struggle with pivot tables. And this would be a great opportunity for an intern to jump in and assist, which will help to build their relationship wealth. Where's this relationship being built, wealth being built? It's being built at the offices, at lunch. I remember when I first started our Wilmington, Delaware office, the group of new hires that we all started within a few weeks of each other ate lunch together every day. Also, you're building that relationship wealth at work-related events and even virtual connections like this webinar, even though I can't see any of you. And when, you need to be intentional about carving out time each week. Set a reminder for at least an hour a week for self-development. This can be LinkedIn learnings, it can be listening to TED Talks, it can be having lunch with someone new. These are all ways to invest in your relationship wealth. And if you build that habit early, as we know, relationship wealth building, occurs throughout your entire career. So if you're building that habit early, it'll continue throughout your career. And how? When you're at the beginning of your career, prepare your elevator speech. What do you do? Details about your work, something personal. Ask questions and be inquisitive. Share stories about a conflict and the takeaway lessons. When you're sharing this information, people are learning from everything that you're saying and that helps to build that relationship well. Make sure you're following up with mentors. These are all examples of how you can develop your relationship wealth at the early stages of your career. So I wanted to share two examples of programs that Chubb and Impact have for our early career women. As I talked about earlier, Impact is Chubb's Women's Business Roundtable. And I'm really just sharing these ideas as a hope of for you all to generate some of your own ideas on creating or adding to your organization's mentorship and networking efforts. These programs are really meant to help create communities where you can continue professional development outside of your selected field and develop contacts with others beyond your department or geography. The first program we have is called Chubb Start. This is a program for those early, in their, early on in their careers or new at Chubb. Think about that like first 10 years. This program is designed to provide learning sessions on early career experience. Development topics are assigned on a quarterly basis and the groups meet quarterly to discuss them. This community helps to establish and solidify their networks and they actually even gain exposure to more senior women. And then those business skills are added in from subject matter experts as well. 
This platform complements our early career training by providing self-selected courses on topics like how to network and personal brand. After a few years within Chubb, women have the opportunity to apply for Impact's Coaching Circle Mentoring Program. In 2023, Chubb kicked off our sixth year of this program, and I'm proud to say it's our largest cohort to date. We have 605 total participants that consist of 90 circles and 515 mentees, reaching across the United States, Canada, and Bermuda. To give you an idea of how these circles are structured, each circle consists of five to six women from different disciplines and geographies that are paired up with an AVP or a VP level woman. Not only are business topics like the ones you see listed here um, addressed one through each month, but career challenges, questions, and advice are all part of the circle. Creating this environment where women can feel safe to speak freely about their careers helps to develop long lasting relationships with other women who are at the same point in their career. And they're also getting invited getting guidance and advice um, from a more senior person besides their manager. This is invaluable. We've even had women that have gone through the program once and they apply again. This is how much they love it. I actually participated in this program back in 2019 as a mentee and have been involved in it for the last three years as a coach. So let's move into that mid-career. How are you building relationship wealth during your mid-career? At this stage of your career, women tend to believe that their subject matter wealth alone will advance their career. So they put their heads down and they work very hard. But over time, your subject matter wealth has dimin diminishing marginal returns. You've created a new standard and everyone expects you to do a great job to go above and beyond. Therefore, what was originally an advantage becomes the new baseline. Mid-career women tend to network less than their male counterparts a large percentage because they have less time as they're focusing on their expertise, they have household or childcare responsibilities, or they're caring for elderly parents. And honestly, they see less senior women in executive roles above them. Remember the chart that said only 33.5% of executive roles are women? That has an impact on that mid-level career woman. Having other women or mentors that you can consult with to discuss career challenges or next steps is vital. This relationship wealth will help you to build your confidence in pursuing the next opportunity. I cannot tell you how many times I've reached out to a mentor about a particular situation where I felt uncomfortable taking a risk. And by the end of the conversation, I felt, that I felt more sure of myself than before I started. That's why relationship wealth is so important. Again, taking that concept of the who, what, where, when, and how, how are we doing, how are we building relationship wealth in the middle of your career? Who are you building that with? So remember in the early stages of your career, you're really building that with your manager and your peers. When you're in the middle of your career, you're building that relationship wealth with the next level managers. You're connecting with your colleagues outside of your division and you're building relationships with leaders and employee resource groups. You're seeking out stretch assignments. You're volunteering to speak on panels or at an IAMB women's uh, webinar. You're being intentional about becoming more visible. And again, you're asking for feedback from senior leaders and trusted advisors. Remember, when you're seeking feedback, reach up, reach down and reach around. One of the other things I like to say is, it's always a good idea to reach out to your alma mater and volunteer to be a mentor to students. I went to Temple University and uh, graduated from the risk management insurance program. And for the last two years, each semester, I've been assigned a new mentor of either a rising junior or a rising senior um, that I've worked with throughout the, through the semester. Um, it's not a heavy lift, but it's really great to give back to my school and help these kids that are coming up um, in, into the insurance industry. And, and this semester, actually, my mentee is an intern here at Chubb. Where are you doing? Where are you doing this? Where are you building this relationship well? This can be done within internal groups within your organization or external professional networking associations. And don't forget about charitable foundations. A lot of us volunteer our time outside of our work or home life, and this is a great way to help build build your network as well. Similar to early in your career, it's really important to remember to carve out an hour a week for self development. You should aim to maybe schedule a lunch once a week or once every other week with a sponsor or a mentor. And now even maybe think about reaching out to your mentees and, con and consider having lunch with them as a way to assist them with their professional development. The how. 
take on more visible leadership roles within employee resource groups. I mentioned that I'm the regional connector for, for impact. I started off being the, just the, we call it a branch champion. So I was the person in Philadelphia that was working for impact. Now I'm doing that on a regional basis. And now I'm also involved. I mentioned the coaching circles program, but also within like our 5k planning committee. Um, so I'm getting more involved uh, within impact and go from being a mentee to a coach. That's another great way to, to, to expand your relationship wealth, whether it's in your organization or as I mentioned, going to your alma mater. Also remember to promote yourself on LinkedIn. For example, if you attended the IAB Women's Conference, you should have posted about that. You're doing a lot outside of your you know, daily tasks and you should be promoting all that you do. So again, just wanted to highlight programs that we have here at Chubb as a way to, to um, create some ideas, but using that coaching circle program that we talked about, now's the time when you're in, you're in your mid-career of going from that mentee to a coach, that, you know, that AVP, VP level woman, which is where I fall, your mid-career is the perfect time to make that move. So thinking back to our coaching circles program, while we're spending time helping our coaching circle members, our senior leadership understood the need to ensure that coaches are also making connections and obtaining leadership development. In 2022, coaches, coaching circles introduced our SVP and EVP women to our circles, and our senior leaders sat in on one of the circle sessions to provide insight on a given topic, as well as make connections with both the coach and the mentee. The feedback from my circle was that was the most rewarding session. Amy Feller, who's the regional executive officer for Chubb's North or New York region, sat in with my circle last October. Our topic that month was imposter syndrome. Um, and I know I suffer from that and I'm sure some of you on the line also suffer from that. And it was refreshing to hear Amy say that she has also experienced imposter syndrome and she provided tips to our circles on how to overcome it. She mentioned keeping a positive mindset, owning your accomplishments, visualizing success, Making a plan, getting organized helps you manage your anxious feelings and breaking down your goals into smaller, more manageable chunks. In addition, after overwhelming requests from the coaches to get together, Impact hosted an in-person circle session um, where we invited numerous of our senior executives to join us for a networking dinner, as well as provide leadership development sessions through various senior executives, including our heads of division, our culture officer, and others. This is all provided to our coaches from all across North America. So not only are we providing that leadership development so that these women can continue to advance in their career, but they also expanded their networks with their peers and helped gain exposure to senior executives. This all created some post-event contact and hopefully some advocacy and sponsorship opportunities. This is another direct way to build your relationship well. I can say that this was definitely beneficial to me as a coach because I was able to interact with my peers from across North America in person, which was fantastic, as well as senior leaders from across our organization. So let's take a look at that executive senior leadership level. At this point in your career, you've achieved formal positional wealth. You have the title that carries its own weight and commands respect. You have the subject matter wealth, information wealth, and some relationship wealth. Never forget to continue to always build your relationship wealth. But now as an executive, your role becomes more of a connector of people, ideas, and business objectives. You have a bird's eye view of the company and you are keenly aware of trends. You steer core initiatives, you establish company-wide policies and standards, you make critical decisions, you're overseeing that mid-level manager, and you're preparing your team to be ready for change instead of reacting to it. You have an array of people you can rely on because of your relationship wealth, not, not just because of your formal positional wealth, your title. My involvement with Impact has given me access to individuals within Chubb whom I have never engaged with otherwise. I interact with women from all different departments within Chubb at various stages of their career all across North America. Not only am I building that those personal relationships with these women, but we utilize our positional and relationship wealth to ask for assistance in influencing others in driving impacts mission on a local level. That's why relationship wealth is so important. 
A strong leader is highly intelligent with complex emotions and feelings. They display compassion and self-awareness. She influences behaviors and decisions and is prepared for any changes and has strong wisdom to guide those with less experience. Building relationship wealth at this level of your career is just as important as it was in the beginning. And as a senior executive woman, you serve as an example to those with less experience than yourself. So when you're at that senior level, you're building that relationship with other senior executives. Find your allies. I, I mentioned I was talking to a group this morning about our, our impact program. And I, I said, you might not fall into whether it's impact, mosaic, or different business roundtables, but we all need allies. So that senior executive woman's building her ally network. You're connecting with members of the board or you're, and you're leading or sponsoring employee resource groups. An executive level woman understands the macro behaviors and patterns and figures out what's working and what's not working. They're curious to uncover the real issues impacting employees and they lead by example. A senior woman is visible to all employees. All eyes are watching her. One, because there's only 33 and a half percent of women in senior executive roles, but two, because that's the power she carries. So she is visible to all employees. So again, when she's building that career wealth, she's reaching up, she's reaching down, and she's reaching around to help build that network. As important as it was in your early and mid-career, it's also important that the senior level woman remembers to carve out an hour for self-development. So again, scheduling a lunch with a coach or a mentee um, and dedicating time to those mid-level managers and helping helping influence them to become to become mentors to, to those high-performing individuals. And when you're at that senior executive level, you want to probably invest in a professional uh, career coach as well. The how: become a board member of a professional development organization or a charitable foundation. Become an executive sponsor of an employee resource group, and lead with your words and actions. Use your voice in meetings to support other women. So Ignite Impact was a program that Chubb Impact launched in 2022, where we took the concept of our coaching circles program and incorporated external business partners. Through senior and regional executive nomination, we selected 22 pairs of women, one SVP level woman, and then a senior agent or broker. These women were invited to attend a two-day event focusing on personal and professional development, networking, and dedicated business planning. Leadership topics like agile and adaptive leadership and long-term strategic thinking were discussed through outside speakers. Networking activities were built in throughout the two days in order for the pairs to connect with each other, share experiences, and expand their networks. There was definitely some wine drinking at these events, but also fun activities such as beekeeping, falconry, and archery. These activities pushed women out of their comfort zones and helped to create a strong sense of community amongst the group. In addition, time was given for the pairs to develop a business plan together and execute throughout the year to drive business in their respective offices. Based on the goals input, these initiatives have been generating close to $30 million in business and activities across the country as well as in Canada. And one of the initiatives that came out of our 2022 program was delivered in the fourth quarter of uh, 2022, where Chubb partnered with one of our agents to bring leadership development to both of our organization's employees, as well as some mutual clients. We had over 300 people attend watching events in 14 cities across North America, as well as an education, oh, as the educa education session was conducted live from Philadelphia. We utilized professors from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business, and the education session was focused on that agile and adaptive leadership. After the sessions wrapped up, the local offices engaged in networking activities with senior executives from both organizations. It was a really great event, and it was nice to see all of the pieces come together. So as I wrap up, I just was hoping to give you all a better understanding of the who, what, when, and how to create relationship wealth through mentorship, networking, and development at all stages of your career. As we've seen from the statistics, this will help attract, hire, retain, and promote women into your organizations and the insurance industry. Consider using life cycle surveys, contract studies, and proactively designing formal or informal networking opportunities for your organizations. 
Organizations have to proactively support talented women and get them in the pipeline for leadership. Recruit and retain all of the people you can. Develop, coach, and network with them. And they will stay in advance within your organizations. So our call to action. If each one of us goes back to our office, whether that's in person or remote, think of one female that you don't know well and reach out to make a connection. Think of all the new connections for women within our communities. Remember, people stay at companies because of the people. Make sure you all have your talent profiles or LinkedIn profiles updated. Take 15 minutes a week to post on LinkedIn and promote all that you do. And finally, if you're in a position to make influence these hiring decisions, ensure that you have a diverse slate of candidates for every job. So that wraps up my session. I'm happy to take any questions if there were any, but here's my contact information. I would love to connect with everyone on LinkedIn if it's possible. I'm glad I didn't wear the blue dress because it would be a <laughs> lot of blue on the screen. Um, but thank you all so much. Thank you, Tiffany. And I appreciate that you wore the IAMB green instead of the blue. So thank you. Woohoo! Score. <laughs> All right, just a few last minute things. Thank you so much for the information. Um, networking is always at the top of our list. And what is really awesome is the next thing I'm gonna show you here in just a second is that this has come up as a topic that our young agents want to hear more about at our um, young agent conference. Just give me one second here. There we go. All right, so sorry about that. Okay, like I said from the beginning, this is not the end. We wanna keep this going. So we do have another webinar coming up on September 14th. The thing about women that make such great leaders. Um, this is with Sarah Bradshaw Ray, who you also saw at the Women's Conference. And then we've got our Young Agent Conference, October 3rd through 4th at the Cork Factory Hotel in Lancaster. And we have just added a women's breakfast to that. So before registration, we're gonna invite all the women to come together and and um, just network, 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 network. Meet All right. someone and one, new. Meet someone yeah, new. <laughs> there you go. And stay connected. Don't forget to check out our IAMB Women in Insurance Facebook group as well. So I think I'm just double checking here. We do not have, I don't think we had any questions, just lots of compliments coming in. So thank you very much, Tiffany. Thank you all for joining us. And we will see you the next time around. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jess.